Okay, come in and grab a seat. Come and take a seat. Come and join us. Come and grab a seat. There's plenty of seats, unsurprisingly, left at the front. That's brilliant. There, there isn't going to be any audience participation for those who are nervous about that. Really, really, I <laughs> okay, I'm going to give it a cu couple more minutes um, until I get a signal from Rachel. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, great. Uh, so we're we're going to begin. Um, thanks for thanks for joining us for the um, the performance, which is the outcome of our uh, future soundings workshop. Um, so uh, I'm Paul from Uninvited Guests. This is Jess from Uninvited Guests, and uh, this is Duncan Duncan Speakman. Um, so yeah, we're from the performance company Uninvited Guests. Duncan is a sound artist. Um, Twenty. Ooh, suddenly my voice is through the speakers. Um, so 20 participants uh, have, have done a workshop with us and uh, they used an app uh, that took us on a walk, took them on a walk into the future of Bath and they wrote uh, science fiction stories for the places that they went to uh, following some prompts. What you're about to hear is their collective speculations or imaginings. Um, so all the words that you'll hear are theirs, not ours. Um, this will, it will last around uh, 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and yeah, Jess and, Jess, Jess and Duncan have very swiftly um, composed uh, the narration and soundtrack that you're going to hear. So this is an improvisation with the soundings workshop, with the soundings that workshop participants took of the future of Bath and this Bath Spa campus. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Jess and Duncan. We are moving through time and the world around us is changing. So we're moving through time and the world around us changing. Welcome to the year 2045.
It's warm and it's raining. It's raining hard. There are mostly prefabs built out of shipping containers. But generally, spaces are in poor repair. You can see rubble and tired plastic, corrugated sheeting and makeshift structures. People are wearing layers of clothes, one top, one on top of the other, so they can peel off the protective outdoor layer when they go inside. People are stopping and talking to one another. They're shaking hands, announcing their names in case the people passing them can't see their faces under the layers of all of their clothing. You can hear rushing water. In fact, it's torrents. You can hear tools. And you can just hear the sound of birds. Just in the very few trees. Now there are workshops for wealthy young people to make luxury goods. And there's also a massive supermarket where people work. There aren't many residential homes here. It's mostly empty apartment buildings, and people are taking over other spaces instead. People are walking, and they're on bikes, powered by wind and solar. Solar-powered bikes. We're now in the 2050s, the early 2050s. It's sunny and it's clear. In fact, it's a balmy evening in November. It's warm, it's really warm and it's muggy and there's loads of mosquitoes. It's dry and blustery, that warm, dry, blustery heat. And sometimes there are thunderstorms. Acid rain has affected the stonework of the older buildings. Mid-level, three to four story buildings have replaced the single story. There are roof gardens which provide locally grown food and solar panels and windmills to generate power. Some houses are on stilts. We're on high ground to be safe from the encroaching water. You can see also eco-huts, small homes built from recycled plastics designed to generate energy from the sun. 
and they have reactivity windows to protect from the summer sun and fully grey water plumbing systems. And there are lots of colours, like a rainbow, as each owner can design their own cladding. Clothes are made from organic material, the new sheep. Fungal handbags are all the rage. Young people are in mismatched clothes, seemingly from every decade. And people are even taller and thinner and healthier as nutrition and fitness have improved with wearable technologies, allowing everyone to manage their health and nutrition. There's a lot of individuality and style. Everyone is valued for being unique. Anything goes. You can hear the hum of turbines, no traffic noise, and the breeze. There is the distant chatter of birdsong. The university is still here in the early 2050s. The building is a hub of activity alongside the warehouses and public libraries are on every street. The term library is a relic of a time when public buildings once served as repositories of print media. Now, libraries, their main function is as a collective, free spaces for work, creativity, connectivity, and collaboration for all. In the late 2070s and the early 2080s, it's warm, it's still warm, but it's warmer in the summer and colder in the winter. There are multi-purpose buildings around with vertical forests and there are pedestrian paths everywhere. The outside structures of the old warehouses remain. They have been knocked through and transformed into open art and community spaces with the vertical farming and hydroponics. Outside them has been rewilded. People wear gender neutral clothing, tech sensitive clothing and bright colors. People wear colors and patterns all looking very different and expressing themselves freely. Once again, anything goes. People now communicate with telepathy and an empathy implant. In fact, everyone has an earpiece, which means they can understand all languages and communication devices are embedded into their fingers. They speak more often to people remotely and not often to those near them physically. I can hear a cacophony of voices and a humming from the background machinery to keep farming and energy systems running. There's often a lot of wind and the sound of heavy rain on grass. People are working in the, in the big warehouses. 
The work is mainly about sustaining communities and tending to gardens. This is due to there being vertical, vertical tower forests alongside the outside of houses for mixed age groups that live and work nearby. Some people have decided that they want to now live underground where it's warmer and less exposed to the winds. Wind is the major energy source. So we've moved forward in time now to the year 2090. It's really hot today. This time of year used to be called autumn. And this autumn period used to have chilly weather and lots of rain. Hard to imagine that now. It's now a lot of 40 degree days. And we wear special clothes to try as best as we can to stay cool. Maybe surprisingly, or, or, or not, depending on who you ask, the Lidl is still here. Of all the buildings to survive the collapse of the early 21st century, I'm I'm surprised this building has managed to remain standing. Of course, everything is overgrown and it's just a shell of what it used to be. No bright lights and no fresh food. Just a structure caught in a moment of time. many people are around due to the heat caused by all the manufacturing of the last few years. It's not really safe to be outside without your special gear. So since going outside takes so much risk and effort, most people stay indoors trying to protect themselves from the sun and the elements. Quite quiet, almost eerily so. We've moved forward again in time to the year 2122. The weather is now dry and arid, and there are strong winds. Bath is filled with tall buildings, skyscraping buildings that level out the hilly landscape. And the river is no more, it's now residential. 
People are covered from head to toe in man-made translucent protective fabric that transmits personal or social information. You can hear the sound of digital wind, the murmur of technology. Places of residence are now on the old waterways. They're self-built and communal. People travel on foot and mobile buses. Each person has a partnered neighborhood across the other side of the world. When they close their eyes and tune in with the embedded tech in their fingers, they can feel and experience that place. They are a remote custodian of something there. They must check in and maintain care regularly. This web of interconnected care at times feels a burden but means you sensorially exist in two places at once and feel a global, mutual dependency. Thank you.